Welcome everyone, they call me Intra Tech Out, and for a decent time now I've been thinking about how health systems influence player behavior in games. Even though health seems like a relatively small part of a video game, how fast it drops and the way it regenerates has a gigantic impact on the way the game is played. This is something that became really obvious once I started making games in dreams. The impact of different health systems is something I'm not even sure is fully considered all the time by game developers. As I'll go through examples, you'll see that in some cases the health system complements the gameplay and in some cases it hurts it. In the best case, a health system fuels the gameplay and the fun the player has. In the worst case, a health system makes the player disengage with most of the mechanics in order to be more effective. Let's begin. So like I alluded to earlier when it comes to health, there are two areas you can cover the amount of health the player has and the way in which it regenerates. I'll cover both what these do in single player and multiplayer games, but I'll start with multiplayer, because time to kill is an obvious, important part of multiplayer games. And there are really only two directions for developers here. The time to kill is either high or low. Of course different weapons will have different damage outputs, but in order to make the game balanced, TTK can't be varying too much. Unless it's specifically a weapon that has a certain risk reward mechanic built into it, or if it's a power weapon. Power weapons like RPGs or grenade launchers don't make much sense from a balancing standpoint, but do make sense from a map design standpoint. Arena shooters have power weapons spawn at specific locations to drive player movement and create conflict. But these can be ignored for now. There's a very obvious difference between Halo and Titanfall in terms of time to kill. In Halo, fights can take seconds to complete, players can be jumping, strafing, throwing grenades, switching weapons, retreating, pushing, all before one of them dies. Almost every fight is a true fight, things happen, tables turn and mechanical skill will dictate the victor. You can come up behind somebody, shoot first and still easily lose the fight. Titanfall 2 is a lot faster in comparison. The time to kill is long enough that things can happen and the player can escape or turn the fight around, but barely. When you come up behind somebody and shoot first, there's a lesser chance that they'll be able to perform a counterattack. The main difference you usually see between high and low time to kill games is that a high time to kill puts an emphasis on mechanical skill and a low time to kill puts an emphasis on positioning and tactics. What's interesting is that both can create very hardcore experiences and both can create very casual experiences. That's where a lot of other design decisions come in. Respawn time for example. In Call of Duty there's a very low time to kill and you respawn instantly. Combine this with the gameplay style of well running around and there will always be a situation where you'll come up behind somebody or have a lucky drop on somebody. You're always guaranteed at least some kills during a match. Now take Rainbow Six Siege. It has a really low time to kill as well, but no respawns. No regenerating health either, but I'll get to that. Suddenly the gameplay becomes extremely slow and methodical, and tactics and positioning matter way more than they ever will in a Call of Duty match. With high TTKs it's not really the respawn time that dictates the casualness, <laughs> it's more how the health regenerates. The second part of the equation. I've been trying to figure out for a while if in an arena shooter, non-generating health makes the game more or less casual. In other words, does it result in more or less kills that are undeserved? A point that's often made is that regenerating health removes punishment for bad gameplay and so is more casual. You can almost die, but just wait behind the wall for 3 seconds and you're back as if nothing happened, ready to take on the next opponent. But my counterpoint is that in most situations, both players will get hit during a fight. And since getting hit leaves you permanently handicapped, you're more likely to lose against the next player you come across. Now the loser of the fight responds with full health and the next battle they'll probably win. This is something I really noticed in the Doom 2016 competitive multiplayer. I often killed one guy, lost half my health and got killed by the very next guy I came across just a couple seconds later. It didn't matter what my skill was, with a high time to kill there was no way for me to win. I think the developers purposefully ignored regenerating health because the game was going more old school, but the multiplayer might have actually been more fun with something like that. You'd almost think that the best solution is a hybrid system. And that's where Halo comes in. Halo Reach in particular. In Halo Reach you have a regenerating shield. It regenerates when you haven't taken damage for a short amount of time. If it goes down, damage bites into your health instead of your shield until you die. Health doesn't regenerate and is only recoverable through health packs scattered around the map. I like this system because on the one hand it keeps you accountable. If you're too sloppy during a gunfight you will be punished and go into the next fight with less health than your opponent. If you fought well the first fight your shield will recharge from the couple shots you undoubtedly took and you'll be ready for the next challenge. Also even where your health is critically low from a hard fight the recharging shield means you'll still get a chance at beating the next opponent. 
You'll never become a one-hit kill, unlike most games that lack recharging health. When I used to play Halo Reach split screen at a friend's house, we literally went entire 20 minute matches without getting any kills. That's how much this system rewards mechanical skill. I think this is something that could definitely be considered more for our high time to kill games and arena shooters. Of course, no health regeneration at all has its own uses and benefits. You'd see a lot more game breaking aggression in Rainbow Six Siege if health regenerated and it would make some of the trap operators obsolete. If you foolishly run into a Capcan explosive in Siege, the rest of the match you'll be at a disadvantage. For games with really long respawn times, a lot of travel time to get back to the fight, or games with no respawns at all, I think regenerating health generally makes less sense. So for health and multiplayer games then, let's now talk about single player. In this section of the video I'll be looking a lot more about how health systems either stimulate or suppress fun gameplay. You'd be forgiven for thinking that there isn't much more to health in single player than multiplayer, but there's actually a lot more room for depth in health systems. Like first of all, in single player games the time to kill for enemies can vary greatly between enemy types, and the time it takes for them to kill you is also always different. Single player games also usually have more interesting ways to heal. Let's just look at a couple games and see how well they manage. First of all, an example of a health system that doesn't complement the gameplay is the one in Red Dead Redemption 2 in my opinion. There's a bit of a design conundrum here. On the one hand Rockstar wants to create a realistic open world game where losing health means something and you need to make use of consumables to restore your health. On the other hand Rockstar wants to create downright arcadey shooting galleries where you take on silly amounts of enemies. Literally almost every mission in this game ends with a large shootout where you take on like 20, 50, 80 enemies. What Rockstar ended up going for is quite a large health bar that kind of recharges slowly when not hit for a while but can also be restored with certain consumables. While this is absolutely great for the open world, it absolutely falls apart in the shooting sections. This actually counts for both RDR2 and GTA 5. Why? Well there's a reason why very few action games with hitscan enemies have health that doesn't regenerate. It's just unreliable and feels unfair most of the time. In a game like RDR2 you never know when you'll get hit by an enemy. When you run into the open or try to change cover, enemies will sometimes miss you and sometimes hit you immediately. Losing health semi-permanently is not really a fair punishment since you cannot do much about it. This inconsistency makes the most reliable way to play a quite boring way to play. Just stay behind cover, make use of the ridiculous auto-aim to deal with the next enemy. L2, R2, L2, R2, L2, R2. So here's the deal. When the player doesn't regenerate health, enemies have hitscan weapons so impossible to dodge attacks and enemies are easy to kill, this stimulates good positioning and even stealth from the player's end. It isn't suited for over the top action. In other words, Rockstar's system fits with The Last of Us, not with Uncharted. Talking about Uncharted, how does that one hold up? Well Uncharted uses the at this point well known and recognizable regenerating health system. Get low on health and the screen becomes black and white, don't get hit for a short amount of time and your health regenerates. The system allows players to make a lot more interesting plays and reposition a lot more often. Running out of cover in Red Dead Redemption 2 can leave you at low health for the rest of the fight or make you burn through consumables. Running out of cover in Uncharted is way more forgiving. Yes, you might get hit a couple times, but as long as you get to another piece of cover in time, you won't be at a permanent disadvantage. This also allows developers to make the enemy AI way more aggressive. They can push you a lot more and flank you more often, and it won't feel unfair. For action games, regenerating health is a decent system, but not perfect. Because what does regenerating health encourage? Well, running away from fights or staying in cover. As a result, action games can sometimes be more fun at lower difficulties. On higher difficulties you're often robbed of the fun of moving around constantly. You can't go into hand to hand combat as much because you'll get shot immediately. You can take out more than one enemy before your health gets so low that you need to stay in cover for a long time. I think the Just Cause games are a big victim of this issue. These games are supposed to be all about relentless action, but instead you'll find yourself constantly having to run away for a bit because your health is so low. The best way to figure out how well your health system is designed to encourage fun gameplay is to look at the most extreme situation. The player is low on health and there are multiple strong enemies around. What does the player do? In Red Dead and Uncharted they'll wait behind cover. Not fun or engaging, but at least they have some avenues to get their health back. An issue you see more in RPGs and games not focused around firearms is that getting low on health early into a fight can be a death sentence. This is a criticism I have of games like God of War 2018. In God of War you heal by slamming green orbs on the ground. You have no control over them, they are placed by the developers. They can also spawn from dying enemies, but it's really inconsistent, presumably because the developers make the chance bigger if your health gets lower. 
Now what happens when you fight a boss or a large group of enemies and you get hit to the point of low health? What well, almost doesn't matter how well you play beyond this point, get hit once and you die. It can be intense when near the end of a fight, but at the beginning or in the middle it just makes you want to give up. In games like these, fights are set up like this challenge that you need to accomplish with a specific amount of resources. Now I get that the system might sound fair, I mean, you play sloppy you get punished, right? Yes, but you also don't really get rewarded for playing well afterwards. Getting low on health long before a fight ends is just so demoralizing and demotivating, I often just purposefully die or reload a checkpoint when this happens to me. It just isn't worth it to try to play perfectly for the coming 7 minutes. I felt the same in large fights in Horizon Zero Dawn and Witcher 3. These two do have more ways to regain health during a fight, again consumables, but still I think health can be handled better. This finally brings us to the best health system of any game ever. A system so good I want every game to consider its approach. I'm of course again talking about Doom Eternal. Instead of looking at health as the thing that makes the game challenging, the developers really looked at health as the key resource the player wants. And by rewarding this resource for playing in a fun way, they could essentially force players to move out of their comfort zone. They finally figured out how to solve that action game problem, where higher difficulties make you engage less with the mechanics instead of more. In Doom Eternal you get health by glory killing enemies, so damaging them to a certain point, rushing in and performing an execution animation. But you also get health by hitting frozen enemies. And you also get health by using the blood punch and a specific upgrade. And you also get health for killing an enemy when you're low on health yourself. And then there is armor as well. You get armor for damaging enemies that are on fire. You can set them on fire with a flamethrower, which has a cooldown, but you can set them on fire with a meat hook, meaning you can grapple towards an enemy, shoot them and gain armor in return. There are so many reasons why this system is genius. It first of all means that there is never an unrecoverable situation. And it also puts you in full control of your health, unlike a game like God of War where you feel dependent on the developers to throw you some health in order to survive. But this system also forces you to play aggressively. The more defensive and safe you play, the faster you'll actually die and the less safe you'll actually be. You're also rewarded for using the game's mechanics. The flaming meat hook is the best example of this. Grappling around and flying all over the place is now not just something that's fun, but something that's actively rewarded. There are two terms that are directly related to Doom. Fun zone and push forward combat. Push forward combat is the idea that in that extreme moment where you're low on health, you'll start running towards enemies instead of away from them. This is something that Doom 2016 is famous for. But the idea of the fun zone is an overarching term for the type of concept that push forward combat is. Push forward combat is nothing more than developers encouraging the gameplay style they think is most fun through mechanics. In Doom Eternal, its software realized that they could use this idea for, well, everything in the game. Enemies now have weaknesses encouraging you to switch weapons. This is fun! Enemies now have weak points that when hit make them less effective, encouraging satisfying skill shots. This is fun. But the health system in Eternal solves all the problems I've laid out before. You're encouraged to play aggressively instead of waiting behind cover 80% of the fight because enemies are now your health pickups. Getting low on health now stimulates and motivates because, as I say often, while you can lose all your health in 3 seconds of playing poorly, you can regain all your health in 3 seconds of playing well. And I get that I might be beating a dead horse at this point. I think most people are aware that the Doom Eternal community loves their little shooter game. But I'm still afraid developers haven't paid enough attention. This is true innovation, the likes of which we haven't actually seen in a while, despite how simple this whole idea seems. Imagine if Titanfall had shields that charged by wall running and sliding. Imagine if in Horizon Zero Dawn enemies dropped health when you shot off specific weak points. Imagine if Just Cause had a system where killing enemies and being near to explosions charged an adrenaline meter or something, giving you a shield as well. Even going back to multiplayer games, developers could come up with ways to discourage camping or other unwanted behavior through health systems. Generally though, multiplayer games don't really suffer from the same problems that you see in single player games, as has probably become clear by now. Anyway, I've gone on for long enough. I hope this was interesting and made you think about how your behavior is influenced by the health systems of your favorite games. I'll be looking forward to upcoming games to see if Doom Eternal will end up inspiring some of them. I sure hope so. If there are any games that you think either have an amazing or bad health system, be sure to leave it in the comments. For now, thank you for watching and I'll see you around. If you subscribe.